Okay. Um, thanks, Mark, and thanks, Andre, and everyone for organising this and inviting me to come here. The global narrative you've already heard from Danny and most of the uh, emotions I want to convey have also been uh, reiterated by many of the previous speakers, but I'll try and tell them in my own way in terms of uh, really what the impact that Athena had on my career, uh, which has been you know, immense, especially given the fact that my time in San Diego was just a year and it was abbreviated uh, overall. Uh, let's see, can we navigate this? Okay, so um, this is actually a picture I, I took of Athena the first time that I met her in person. We had had many conversations on the phone before this, but uh, before I joined her lab, I came out with, a, with Danny Hoye and others uh, from Novartis uh, after a very bruising uh, election in 2000 in neuroscience was on in New Orleans and we had uh, arranged to come uh, out to San Diego sometime after that and uh, so to uh, take away the depression uh, we went on Bart's boat uh, with uh, a whole crew uh, and, and that's where I met Paul Kenny and all of Athena's gang that were there uh, at the time and, and I thought this was a great way that people treat their postdocs and team by taking them on this big boat uh, overall. Now before this I'd been a postdoc in uh, Erwin Lucky's lab and Erwin is somewhere here in the, d the darkness back there and I'd had a, a, an amazing uh, few years in Philly uh, and uh, it was very uh, enjoyable and uh, productive but I started thinking about what I was going to do with my life and you know as a postdoc you have that kind of choice you know do you go down the academic route do you go down the industry route and then this position as Danny uh, said appeared which was an uh, industry funded postdoc in a lab that I really uh, um, appreciated the work from and it was in the area of depression and modeling depression which was the field that I had uh, grown up in so uh, I um, I, I went for it, and it, and it, 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 it was really, really a, an exciting time. And also because it was on the West Coast, was, you know, you, you do East Coast, West Coast, very different uh, in the U.S. And and also it got me into uh, you know more uh, operant-based uh, experiments, and in, and in behavior pharmacology, you know, it was it, it, to do longer-term experiments where you know you, you know the, the total animals used in the experiment were n equals ten, which was really unusual for me when I was using like you know. Uh, 50 animals a week in doing four swim tests or whatever, you know, so uh, I, I learned a lot on that and, and really the goal of, of that time and, and, and subsequent interactions was to try and uh, discover uh, new uh, antidepressant medications and, you know, as, as we'd heard earlier, that, you know, uh, from Nick and from others, this is, a, you know, quite a, a, a problem we have and still to this day the, in terms of rational drug discovery. Uh, and of course, we've heard a lot already about the importance of animal models. And in um, coming from Erwin's lab and going to Athena's lab, one of the things that we did together as a team, uh, and I remember uh, fashioning this uh, in Hawaii at ACMP that year, uh, 2001, uh, and, and uh, uh, finalizing the, this review article, which it has been very important for my career uh, because... Um, uh, well, a few things. One is this, the, 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 this rat on the couch uh, is being used an awful lot by people. Uh, and I got this done with the help of the graphics department at Scripps, who were fabulous. And those of you who work in Scripps knows there was an amazing graphics department and a lit, great uh, uh, illustrator there. And, and all of the figures in this, in this review uh, uh, really helped the review become cited. It is Athena's most highly cited uh, article by a long distance, mine, and I think probably our ones too, I'm not sure. but, but uh, um, and it really helped us uh, help put my name on the map in relation to this. Uh, I, I remember going to be invited to uh, give a talk a few years later uh, uh, in Cambridge. And when I walked in, the person said, oh, we were expecting someone much older. And uh, so... Th so um, this, but this re review kind of synthesized both Erwin's view and Athena's view and my view about you know the, the, the issues that we had at the time. Most, uh, as, as we heard from Tony Phillips earlier, still remain to this day, and 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 and, and they all go back to the con 
uh, stroked of validity. Now, those of you who grew up in a Tina's lab or grew up in scripts will recognize this blue background and this yellow font because this is the prototypical scripts background and this is a Tina's slide. So I have a number of slides that I found when preparing this that are actually a Tina's and uh, they are this very, you can't, you can't mistake this scripts-like uh, uh, layout in, in PowerPoint. But the point here is, again, as we heard already, that uh, Athena, along with Mark, over many years have, have really put a lot of effort into trying to explain to the community the importance of different validity criteria uh, that we have. And the one that always sticks with me that is, you know, was the issue about reliability. Because I, reliability was, it was a big issue in depression modeling back then because everyone was told, why aren't you using chronic mild stress, the Wilner model? And I had used that for my PhD and I couldn't get it to work. And lots of other people couldn't get it to work in terms of the specificity of the readouts. It, it definitely stresses animals, but what was going on? And Athena had spent a lot of time with ICSS trying to replicate Jean-Luc Moreau's work in context. Uh, talking with, with Jean-Luc. She went to his lab in Roche in, in Basel to make sure that everything was the same but still couldn't get it to work. And this just highlights one of the things that we haven't heard yet about today but, but it's about reliability. And this is another one, a, a slide that, that, that really I, I, I reinforce from Athena because she always put forward the idea you need an inducing condition and some form of readout. And, 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 and th that's what we're trying to do in, in, in modeling uh, depression. And, um, of course, we've heard about anhedonia, or as George said, hypoadonia, uh, in relation to this, and uh, that um, w basically we need some inducers that will in induce uh, anhedonia uh, in the animals. And they can be varied from stress to genetic susceptibility uh, to uh, drug withdrawal. And I w this is what w w was the one that was attracted to me at this point because I had worked a lot on uh, genetic models with Irwin and also stress models. So uh, when I went to work with Athena, we were working on uh, drug, m uh, drug withdrawal. And again, everyone who went through Athena's lab has, a, has this figure of this rat somewhere with the evil red eye uh, doing the intracranial self-stimulation. Um, and this was some of the work that we did that Danny already mentioned in relation to amphetamine withdrawal. Uh, and, and this is the ICSS readout, but we were looking other behavioral readouts, and that was some of the work that I was doing. And here's another one of Athena's slides, which highlights, and we've seen this earlier, all the different parameters that have been tested uh, to see could they reverse uh, this uh, drug withdrawal. Um, I was interested in, 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 in uh, uh, a specific drug that was on the market as an antidepressant, as, as an, as, as a antidepressant um, but also was being useful for, for nicotine withdrawal, well, which is bupropion. And so it's a lot of the work I did in Athena's lab during that period was trying to characterize what bupropion did uh, on intracranial self-stimulation induced, uh, uh, um, on changes in, in ICSS thresholds induced by withdrawal. In this case, nicotine withdrawal and how this could be reversed by bupropion. And, and the same, this is work that uh, Audrey Brunjel was doing uh, in relation to the somatic signs of withdrawal at the time and how bupropion could reverse this. Um, similarly, around that time, a lot of work was going on in the GABA field in preclinical studies from other labs, starting with Bill Corrigal, and also in, in human studies, uh, work started to emerge, including from Anna Rose Childress's lab, showing that uh, GABA B receptor modulation could be quite uh, an interesting strategy. And Athena, of course, was one of the first to really explore this, and we heard about it earlier about how b both agonist and antagonist could affect reward, and how uh, specific agonists could decrease self administration or decrease um, Q-induced uh, reinstatement uh, of nicotine seeking. Now, um, as Danny said, I moved back to Switzerland. An opening came. Uh, Will Sporn, who was running a lab in Novartis, moved to Roche, so they had an opening for a lab head. And so they asked me, do you want to come and we'll give you your lab and, and have three technicians and start? And, and so uh, and Athena had a really good relationship with Novartis, and so she wanted to smooth that transition as easily as possible possible and was very gracious in, 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 in me going because I was supposed to stay longer in La Jolla. And I guess that's one thing I, did, I, I do want to really reinforce about Athena's uh, relationship with industry was it was always very, uh, um, she realized to, to, to do top neuropharmacology research you need good tools. And to get good tools, you need to work with the industry who are making these tools. And she never w w was too shy about that. And, and, and also her collaborative uh, forces w was always about collaboration uh, with industry. So I crossed to really to the dark side because uh, I, I, when I was in, in, in La Jolla, I was the same as any other uh, postdoc. Um, and um, 
it, it, it was a big you know it was a big transition to say I'm moving now to industry and it puts you down a certain uh, uh, trajectory and uh, the, the time in, in La Jolla I, I you know as I said I was treated like all the other postdocs although I, I was put out to the outpost along with Anton Bespalov in uh, Sorrento Valley uh, which was where they kept the monkeys and me and Anton and um, <laughs> no comment uh, on that. Uh, but I, you know, one of the things I look back at him was how much Athena could get achieved with so little space. When I arrived in San Diego, I was so surprised at you know, the amount of people she had in postdocs. And she w they had one room in, C in, in CBN where people sat. There was like nine people and five seats. And it was like you know, the, uh, the ICSS and, and intravenous self-administration boxes were running all the time. I mean, one of this, but it was Athena's ambition and drive and ability to get things done that this never stopped her. I mean, one of the secretaries once joked with me, if that um, broom falls out of the closet, Athena will try and put two postdocs in there with an office, <laughs> you know. And, and, and there was something in that as well. So anyway, uh, after leaving, uh, we, 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 we kept very much in touch. And then this whole new project emerged from, from NIH. Uh, which was this um, uh, 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 collaborative uh, network of academia and, in, and, and industry uh, collaborations, building on the National Cancer Institute's model, but now bringing it to the NIMH and NIDA. And Linda Brady was instrumental in, 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 in pushing this forward. And Athena applied uh, with me as the uh, industry partner, along with my colleagues at Novartis. And uh, the focus of this grant, which was quite a substantial grant, was on modeling depression and getting treatments for nicotine dependence. And so over uh, many years, therefore, th that was the, the, the dual mandate that we had. It was felt that we needed to work more on depression models and we needed to work more on, on treatment strategies for, for nicotine dependence. And that was the NIMH, NIDA uh, perspective on it. And uh, so we got that in 2003 and, and I was able to build up a protected team in, in Basel, and Laura was one of the, 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 the uh, grad students to come on at that time, uh, and uh, David Slattery, who's now a, a professor uh, in his own right uh, in Frankfurt, but David came on as a postdoc on, on the team from David Nutt's lab uh, in, uh, in, in Bristol, and we started profiling or, or characterizing reward processes in different animal models. This is the bulbectomized model where we're looking at uh, ICSS as well as locomotor sensitization, and then we also started working on the uh, um, uh, on, on nicotine dependence and looking at all of what we've heard today about different strategies for nicotine or other, and we use nicotine because the, the, uh, um, the companies uh, uh, were somewhat amenable to nicotine, and Gina Von Hickey was from the respiratory group, and Tina was well able to navigate saying, okay, they're not going to fund cocaine dependence, but they would fund nicotine dependence, and so that was showing her tenacity and being able to navigate what, how to get things done, and we looked at a lot of different things, and this was just some of the work from that, looking at GABA B modulators, uh, this was in relation to cocaine dependence, Dependence and uh, it, it, um, the same modulators in nicotine uh, place preference in some of the molecular markers of nicotine dependence, be it uh, delta FOS B in the in, in, in the incumbents, for example. And then we also start characterizing these compounds. This is some of Laura's thesis work uh, in models of anxiety. And uh, that allowed us to start branching out from there. And then I, then I had, by this I had moved back from the dark side to Ireland um, uh, and to take up a faculty position at home. And, uh, but Athena kept going and continued, and this is work from Stella um, on the, these compounds in nicotine dependence. And then more recently, Shah, uh, along with, with, with Vicky and others here uh, in San Diego, started bra really branching out on, on, on these um, uh, modulators on the, the extent they have, not just in dependence, but also also in mood and anxiety, etc. One of the great things that I, I had uh, uh, with Athena in, in this period was we organized a conference together in, in, in Washington in 2011 on anxiety and depression, and it was a really successful one. We drafted in Eric Nestler and Hans Moller to be the co-chairs with us, and it was a really, really exciting conference, and this was an editorial we wrote for Neuropharmacology about it, and uh, was very important um, uh, to kind of solidify where we were as of 2011 for the whole field of anxiety uh, and depression. As a, uh, one of the, um, as an incoming president for the European Behavioral Pharmacology Society, I would be remiss of me not to mention that we're holding uh, the next EBPS in Greece. 
and uh, Tino and Mark are, are, are um, uh, ardent supporters of EBPS. We have some of the past presidents here with uh, uh, Trevor and Barry, and uh, I hope that some of you can put in a symposia uh, for this, and that hopefully we'll have some way in Greece to uh, honor Athena in, in closer to our home turf. And uh, this picture is really, it's a bit out of focus, but it was uh, one that I had of the lab at that uh, time period in 2001. You see uh, Dr. Kenny hasn't aged a bit, Svetlana or hasn't either, or Anton or, or myself, and, and it was really a great time. And, and the one thing I remember most about Athena was her organizational ability. And I wouldn't say she taught me how to be, but, but she was so organized and compartmentalizing everything. You would meet her on a weekly basis and you would have almost a charter with her. She would make you photocopy what you said you would do, bring it back in the next time and check off what you have and haven't done. And it was a great way to organize a complex group of diverse multidisciplinary scientists. And I learned a lot from her in, in that regard in terms of, uh, of how, how to manage and, 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 and uh, uh, move forward in a multidisciplinary fashion. And given the week that's in it, I, we're still waiting for these new antidepressants. And uh, um, uh, there, there's still hope. And we've heard a lot today from all the other speakers about the hope uh, in the field. And maybe also for this week that's in it about America and the hope that's there, I'll just leave you with uh, Seamus Heaney. And, and when we think of the world without Athena, we still have to have some hope. And so even if the hope you start out with are dashed, hope has to be maintained. So thank you very much. <laughs>